Hi, welcome to Gen 5 Runner. This is our second video of three from Overland Expo East 2019. I'm leaving the camping area to head over to the exhibitor area and put in some volunteer hours at the Overland Bound booth. I hope you find this video informative and interesting. If you're new to our channel, welcome. And if you're returning, thank you so much for coming back. Oh, and if you want to know about that red thing on our roof, you're going to have to subscribe to the channel and come back and watch a future video. Should be out soon. Here's a quick look at our camp setup with our gazelle tent and then the mats that we use <coughs> that are made for RVing. And you can't see the stove because it's covered by the spare tire on the swing out, but it's there. I'm super excited to share with you the interview that I was fortunate enough to do with Dan Rich, who is a senior manager with Toyota Research and Development. Dan Rich. I uh, work for Toyota Motors North America. I'm in the research and development department. I've been there for about 32 years, uh, so quite a long time. And I've done different jobs from powertrain evaluation, which means engines and transmissions. Evaluation, I've done calibration, which means changing the, the computer to make it run differently. Um, and then most recently I've done uh, powertrain I did uh, evaluation which means making sure everything functions uh, interfaces with the customer how the car drives and uh, and very recently I'm still in California working on uh, hydrogen powered vehicles we sell a car now that's called the Mirai and it's sold in California basically California only okay um, we're developing working on developing the infrastructure, which means the fueling stations where okay. people can get their hydrogen, right? And so um, we're also developing a um, class eight truck, which means a, a semi uh, that's uh, powered by a hydrogen wow. generator or hydrogen electric generator and uh, working with Kenworth to do that. And we've got a couple other neat projects that are coming down the pipe. Wow. So yeah, it's, it's kind of interesting work. It's well, it was always been way beyond the leading edge of what's happening in technology. It's terrific to hear. Yeah. yeah. Let's talk about Overland. Yeah, love to. Tell me about your rig. Uh, my truck is a 1995 Toyota uh, Land Cruiser. Um, most people would recognize it as an 80 series. It's a station wagon mm -hmm. on steroids. It's got um, uh, all-wheel drive, of course. And, got uh, a very modest uh, two and a half inch lift from the old man in you. Uh, you have Goodrich uh, KO2s on it for traction. I've got uh, front and rear bumpers, uh, sliders for protection. Um, used all of it at any given time. It's all scraped up and well worn. So it's been worth the investment. Right, 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 right. You know, that's always cheap insurance. And I've got uh, um, a, uh, swing outs on the back for spare tire and fuel and, and uh, water and things like that. Um, got a roof rack, carry extra stuff, put a solar panel on top. I mean, it's it's kind of a, a project in uh, trying something, see if it works. If it works, keep it and maybe improve it. And if it doesn't work for me or if I don't need it or if it's something that's just kind of sometimes silly just because I want to try something, I change it up and take it off. So it's kind of a work in progress, you know, I've got it. So building out your rig, what would you say was your worst mistake? Um, worst mistake? Well, a mistake that many people make is putting so much stuff on it that it gets too heavy. Because, uh, you know, being overweight affects a lot of things in the sense that you 
get worse fuel economy for one thing. Um, you know, my fuel economy suffers going up a hill. Uh, you know, it's not a it's not a fast car, even though it's got a supercharger on it, uh, which is an aftermarket uh, supercharger. It's actually a TRD supercharger. Um, it, it doesn't go fast, so I'm kind of in the process of reducing the vehicle weight right now. So okay. the mistake is, I've added so much stuff over the years, not minding how much weight the vehicle has upon it. How did you get involved in off-roading? Um, I grew up in a place where it was very easy to do, and I was always involved in cars. Um, you know, my friends were basketball players and football players, and I tried. And uh, it wasn't really my thing, so I got into uh, the auto shop, and that evolved into uh, building things, building trucks, and uh, we built four-wheel drives, and we'd go uh, off-roading in the in the area, built you know cars that would be considered at that point uh, very mild rock crawlers, but we'd use them to go crawl around the hills and stuff, and then that evolved into uh, hey, let's go rock crawling, and then spend the night or two nights camping, and so. We did that. It was fun. Perfect. So, yeah, that was the very beginning to that. What advice would you give a new person to off-roading or overlanding? What do they need to do first? And I get asked that question a lot, and I talked to people yesterday here at the expo that, that were in that very situation, and the idea of, of their idea of what they wanted to do, uh, you know, I said, I, said, I asked them, you know, what is it that you're goal is what what do you plan on doing and they said well we want to see all the national parks I want to see I want to I want to go to all of the national parks and sometimes that involves camping in campgrounds but we like to camp in places that aren't campgrounds off you know off away from people and, and I said keep that in mind and build your car uh, to meet that need and they had a forerunner in fact and I said the first thing that that I would do is uh, as soon as you can or as soon as they need to be replaced improve the tires get good tires because a flat tire is you know it it, it, it can't it's not going to ruin your day but it's going to put a damper on things so get good tires and then after that um, get some sliders get rock sliders uh, for a little protection it's cheap insurance right. six or seven hundred dollars for rock sliders prevents fifteen hundred dollars of damage to your rock rails and uh, body shops hate to repair rock rails because they're hard to repair. So, yes, yes. Yeah, so that's those are cheap insurance. What about skid plates? Skid plates are good. <clears throat> if you have uh, delicate bits underneath that need protecting, absolutely. Uh, transfer cases and things like that are vulnerable if you are getting into, you know, more serious rock crawling. Um, or you're on a trail, you know, and you never know where you're going to end up, right? You go down a road that gets worse and gets more challenging and more challenging, and pretty soon you're driving over boulders and you land on your exhaust pipe or your drive line or your transfer case, and you know that's a that's a that's a day that'll ruin your day if you yes. crack a crack a transfer case or something like that. So yeah, protection is is worthwhile as well. And then again, watch the weight. Don't put don't put so much on that. That you're protected, everything, but figure out what needs to protect and, and do that with good stuff. With a forerunner, what do you think is a reasonable weight? Oh boy. What's um, a number you'd say, ooh, that's too much? Yeah, I don't know the weight of a forerunner right off the top of my head. I don't think. Um, I think they're around 4,500 to 5,000. Yeah, I, I've heard, I've heard forerunners approaching the 7,000 pound mark. And that's getting really heavy. That, that's getting pretty heavy. Um, but again, um, if it's what you need, then and, you know if it's designed for what you want to do, and you built it for what you want to do, then that's the compromise that you make when you when you build something. Like that. Okay. Tell me about your favorite trail experience. Oh, a couple, a couple of them. Um, a long time ago, when we developed the FJ Cruiser, um, I got invited to go as the sort of the powertrain um, voice or, or expert maybe um, to take the very first group uh, FJ um, and it wasn't even a production vehicle yet, it was a, a prototype vehicle. We took the first FJ over the Rubicon um, 
and that took three days and we had an extremely good driver and uh, he we navigated the trail and it took a little bit longer because the order was don't bend the sheet metal don't damage the sheet metal <laughs> right so it's very it has a very difficult thing to do anybody sure. that's been on the rubicon they kind of take take the chance or take the, the the take the knowledge with them that you know i may not have straight sheet metal when i come out the other end um, so we were able to get it through without any upper body sheet metal damage and that was a great that was a great trip we learned a lot on that trail about how to drive and how to you know tire placement and and throttle control and all those things are so important um, another one is uh, copapelli trail in utah it actually starts near the border of utah and colorado and that's about a three-day trail, and that's a trail that you just drive and enjoy the scenery and the red rock and uh, what you know Utah has to offer. And then it has a very challenging portion uh, that's that's uh, a great uh, downhill rock-strewn trail that uh, is is really fun. That's another that's good one. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Tell me about four weeks. What do you think is the greatest weakness or the greatest strength? Um, weakness, um, thinking of ways they can improve, um, people talk about the forerunner not keeping up with technology as far as the passenger space. I think they're a very capable, uh, vehicle for trail use. Um, they have some very good what's it called, tall terrain or train management systems. Um, but their customer interface or driver interface to the center console is kind of behind the times a little bit. And that's because they, they just marched along with the Forerunner um, as a truck-based body-on-frame vehicle and not worry too much about the accoutrements. Right. And then, then again, the strength of that is that it's a very good Body on frame vehicle, which there are very few left these days. So most uh, of that class of vehicle in an SUV has gone to a monocoque or, or frameless vehicle. And, um, you know, some of them are very capable, but there's a lot to be said for a body on frame vehicle. Right. Yeah, that was one of the things that attracted me to the Forerunner. Is yeah. That I can do modifications to it, and I can attach things directly to the frame. Yeah. So I know my sliders are on my frame, right. and if my sliders don't collapse, we're good. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. It's, we're not going to damage the vehicle. Yeah, yeah, something feels very right about bolting things to a frame. You know, it feels very rigid and very strong. Yes. I don't um, know that it's true, but it feels that way. Yeah, right? and there's some weight penalties, of course, but uh, Toyota decided some time ago that they were going to stay with the Forerunner as a body-on-frame vehicle because it was... Um, a little bit unique in its market, in its niche. It is. Yeah. It's very cool. Okay. Um, some quick questions. Okay. Recovery. Snatch or winch? Um, yes on both because whatever you need is what you use. And what you do before you do anything is uh, plan and prepare for what you're going to do in the safest possible way. If, uh, if a strap Either a kinetic strap or a, or, a, or a polyester strap can just get you over a little bit of a rock to where you can get traction from the vehicle in front of you. You know, if you, if you get pulled by the vehicle in front of you, then, then um, you know, that's the best thing. As, as minimal as possible that you need to do to extract yourself um, is, is what you need to do. If you need a winch, if you're in axle deep mud and all the straps in the world and vehicles pulling uh, are not going to get you out. And I've been in that situation on on uh, Soda Dry Lake in, in Mojave, on the Mojave Trail. Um, we just needed to, to dig the tires in of the recovery vehicle and, and pull me backwards, just pull me out of this mud that was up to my door sills. And, uh, you know, that was really the only thing that we could have done. We tried max tracks, we tried digging every time we dug into it the, this mud was so thick and gooey that it just stuck to the shovel you know you just when you need a winch you need a winch and that's the only thing you can do you think about it you plan it and then you uh, 
always think about you know, what possible way could something go bad so nobody gets hurt. You, know, you, plan, you plan around right. that. Because so. it is dangerous. Yeah, it's a lot of energy. A lot of energy. Absolutely. Um, refrigerators. Mm -hmm. What size? Um, you know what size? That's hard to say because there's so many choices now. There are so many choices. The size depends on how many people you have that you're going to support. And there's boxes now with freezers. If you like ice cream, thumbs up to freezers. Um, I just have a regular fridge. I base my whole menu if I'm gone for three or four, seven days out of my fridge. What can I store in my fridge? You know, there's milk and meat and cheese and, and um, you know, cold drinks, everything fits in the fridge. And the beauty of, a, say, a 50 liter fridge is that all of that 50 liters is usable. Right. You don't have to, you don't have to think, okay, I, I, I got to remember to put ice in there. Um, but, but uh, if you need a freezer, they, they make really nice ones with, with freezers in them. You know, that's, that's a really nice thing to have. Okay. Um, traction boards, must have, nice to have, eh. Uh, you know, again, talk about the insurance level. Um, if you were out on a trail and all you needed was uh, a little a little lift or to get your tire up onto a little ledge or something and, and you didn't have a traction board, you know, you'd have wished you'd spent that two or three or four hundred dollars on traction boards. And right. they're, they're pretty unobtrusive as far as where to put them on a vehicle if you have a roof rack. Um, it's, it's a nice to have. Um, <clears throat> then of course, on, depending on the trail, they may be a must have. Certainly, a lot of people have gotten into those and carry two or four. You know, a guy that carries eight, wow. he carries two on his trailer because wow. he wants to get his trailer up on the same. You know, so you can go overboard certainly <laughs> as with anything. Okay, <laughs> but yeah, or cheap insurance. Trailers. Uh, what do you think about? Um, I I have a trailer. It's a little uh, military style. Five foot by four foot box, and I, it's got a, it's got a rooftop tent on top of it, and uh, for for base camping, I love it. I really like it. Um, I can pull up to a place that I know I'm going to be for three or four days, get it nice and level, unhook it, and go run trails or sightsee or, or anything like that. And at the end of the day, I can come back and my tent's all set up, and my my kitchen is there, and I haven't carried everything around with me. I do carry my. Uh, my fridge in my car uh, because if I'm out on the trail that's where my lunch is right right so um, I do keep my uh, uh, I do keep that separate but to come home and to not worry about um, uh, well to not worry about loading up my car when I'm ready to leave and coming home to a camp that's already set up that's that's a nice thing the trailer has its downsides you've got to got to drag it around it's heavy it's and, and with a trailer you tend to put everything you could possibly ever think you might need in your life in that trailer and that's right. kind of what I've done and so I'm a little bit on a on a uh, weight loss program for my trailer as well because I've got uh, a lot of double redundant stuff in my trailer so sure. uh, but it's it's nice to have I like my trailer a okay. lot one last question okay. trail repairs uh -huh. What part or tool do you carry that most people don't? Yeah, um, know your car, right? You have to know your car. If you drive a Jeep, know what is likely to fail. And how you know that is you go on forums or you become familiar with other Jeep owners and know what trouble they've had. Um, I'm not going to pick on Jeep in particular, but sometimes axles break or joints break. With Toyotas, you might have um, a spare a spare axle, a spare if you in a Forerunner, for example, you have a spare CV joint if you're going to be on a particularly difficult trail. You, you, you can carry just a, a, a standard axle, a CV axle. But the one, uh, you know, carry the wrenches, the the sockets, and everything that fit your vehicle. Um, don't forget the the big sockets that you might need to pull an axle nut off. Uh, you know, include that. And the way you do that is you, you work on your car in your driveway with your tools that you keep in your car, right? Sure. 
um, and then make sure those get back in the box that you carry in your car. But uh, the one neat tool that I have that's that's come through in a clutch uh, is a tool, a little tool called the clamp it. And uh, what you can do with that is with, with that tool and some stainless steel wire just out of a little bale, you can make a hose clamp or you can attach things together or you can you can bind things together with this tool and it's just a little over center clamp a tool that's just a neat little thing to have. It fits in a little pouch and it's it's really handy to have and I've I've used it on, on my car a couple of times and, and pulled it out when other people need need something or other to, right. to fix. Yeah. Yeah, it's a cool little thing to have. Well, Dan, yeah. thank you so much for spending no, time with it's us. It's absolutely my pleasure. I appreciate it. Yeah. You have a good day. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and that you learned a few things from Dan Rich from Toyota Research and Development. I know I did. There's going to be a short video on the clamp type tool that's going to accompany this. It will be published separately though to make it easier for people to access the information. If you're new to our channel, please subscribe before you leave. There will be a button that shows up about right there somewhere. And if you'll click on it and become a subscriber, we'd appreciate that. If you're already a subscriber, we really do appreciate your support. See you next time.